Horror movies are always thought to bring terror and instill a certain uncanny fear amongst us. While some of us find it nerve-wracking, some get an extreme adrenaline rush to find out what happens next. Marvelous Videos has curated a list of underrated horror movies that unfortunately didn't make it big at the box office because of poor marketing and, in some cases, storyline and aesthetics. The audience could not connect to the movie, which inevitably led to massive disaster. So here are a few horror movies that deserve to be appreciated, but unfairly failed at the box office, of which some you might even really like. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. I'm a New Zealand Zoo official, and this monkey is going to Newtown. Brain Dead, 1992. The film Brain Dead, directed by Peter Jackson, is a zombie comedy splatter. The movie is eccentric in its ways. The plot begins with smuggling a Sumatran rat monkey, which is a hybrid of tree monkeys, and plague carrying rats. Despite the warning given by the zoologist, Stuart McAdden, about the dangers relating to the creature, it is shipped off to Wellington Zoo by the survivors of the expedition on the island, since Stuart is bitten by the rat monkey, which leads to disablement on the island. Another character gets introduced, Lionel Cosgrove, who lives in Hatati in a Victorian mansion with his mother, Vera. Lionel's father drowned when he was a kid, which haunted him throughout. Meanwhile, he falls in love with a Spanish Romani shopkeeper's daughter named Paquita Maria Sanchez. Lionel is followed by his mother, Vera, when the couple goes out on a date to the Wellington Zoo, where she gets bitten by the rat monkey and turns into a zombie. The movie revolves around how they try to stop others from getting affected by the virus and turning into a zombie. In the end, Lionel is devoured by his mother, and he cuts her open from within to save himself and Paquita. He defeats his mom by saying that he is aware of the fact that she was the one to drown his father. The film Brain Dead has its own comic timing, which keeps the audience laughing till the end. Made on a budget of $3 million, the film only managed to bag $1.6 million. It failed miserably despite getting positive reviews. It's a fun movie to watch if you're in the mood for laughter and light comedy. The Haunting 1999 The Haunting 1999 attempted to revive the chilling tale of Shirley Jackson's haunted house with a modern twist, but sadly, it fell flat both artistically and financially. The film follows Eleanor Vance, a woman with a traumatic past, as she joins a group invited to the Eerie Heel House by the eccentric Dr. David Moreau for a sleep disorder study. As the nights unfold, the mansion's malevolent spirits target the guests, exploiting their fears and traumas. While the mansion's design and special effects aimed for grandeur, the film struggled to capture the original psychological horror. Where the original 1963 adaptation thrived in subtlety and atmosphere, the 1999 version drowned in its flashy visuals and over-the-top scares. The failure to build a genuine sense of tension and connection with the characters left the audience disconnected, unable to invest emotionally in their plight. Liam Neeson's Dr. Moreau and Catherine Zeta-Jones' Theo lacked the depth required to make us care about their fates. The excessive use of CGI and jump scares only added to the disappointment. Financially, the film's bloated budget and heavy marketing push couldn't compensate for the lack of genuine scares and emotional engagement. The box office disaster can be attributed to the mismatch between the film's glossy exterior and the essence of original story. In essence, The Haunting 1999 stumbled by missing the mark on what made Shirley Jackson's narrative hauntingly captivating. Its failure lay in the inability to balance modern horror techniques with the depth of human emotion, leaving audiences yearning for the subtlety that once made Hill House a true paragon of psychological terror. The Relic 1997 The Relic 1997 dives into a heart-pounding tale set in a grand museum. When bizarre murders shock Chicago, a detective and a biologist unite to unearth the chilling truth. They unearth a monstrous secret, an ancient creature turned predator due to a genetic twist. Racing against time, they fight to prevent its rampage during a prestigious event. With tension rising, the duo battles both the deadly creature and their own fears, weaving a web of suspense and fear. Amid dimly lit corridors, the mystery unravels, revealing a science experiment gone horribly wrong. 
The film's mix of horror and suspense keeps viewers on edge as they're drawn into the duo's race to save lives and solve the enigma, leaving hearts pounding until the climactic end. Despite its promising premise, the relic faced box office disappointment. Its downfall could be attributed to a mix of factors. While the film attempted to blend suspense and horror, it struggled with inconsistent pacing and lackluster character development. The creature's design, though innovative, was often obscured in darkness, robbing the film of a central visual element. The film's marketing also needed to generate sufficient interest. Reviews were mixed. Some praised the suspenseful atmosphere and creature design, while, while others criticized its messy plot and reliance on formulaic horror tropes. Ultimately, the film's inability to deliver a coherent and engaging experience contributed to its box office struggle, overshadowing its potential to become a memorable horror thriller. Kronos, 1993 Kronos 1993 is an exquisite blend of horror and drama that unveils the story of an elderly antique dealer, Jesus Gris. His life takes a mesmerizing turn when he stumbles upon a mysterious device hidden within a statue, a device that grants immortality but demands a thirst for blood. As Jesus grapples with the consequences of their newfound life, a wealthy and dying man relentlessly pursues the device's power. With rich emotional depth, the film explores the delicate balance between eternal life and the price it demands, all while embracing Mexican folklore. Despite its compelling narrative and artistic prowess, Kronos struggled at the box office. Guillermo del Toro's directorial debut suffered from limited marketing and distribution, failing to reach wider audiences. The film's unique blend of horror and emotional themes might have alienated mainstream horror fans seeking more traditional scares. The lack of star power and its foreign language nature also contributed to its commercial struggles. Nevertheless, Kronos is a cult classic due to its captivating storytelling and early hints of Del Toro's distinct cinematic style. Mimic, 1997 Mimic 1997 tells a story of experiments gone wrong and the terrifying consequences that ensue. The tale unfolds in a city plagued by a disease transmitted by cockroaches, where an ingenious insect expert creates modified bugs to eliminate the pests. However, these creatures evolve into predators that imitate their prey. Amidst the chaos, in lit alleyways and subway tunnels, the insect expert joins forces with a subway police officer to thwart the hybrid insects and save the city. The movie invokes a sense of unease through its landscapes and eerie subterranean settings. It delves into the dilemmas surrounding progress and the unforeseen aftermath of meddling with nature. Suspense and fear intensify as our protagonists navigate this world, feeling trapped alongside these insect predators. Upon its release, Mimic received mixed reviews despite its concept and skilled direction. Some critics pointed out pacing and character development issues, while others praised its tension and unique premise. Though it may not have reached the level at which director Guillermo del Toro works, Mimic remains a testament to his early ability to blend horror with thought-provoking themes, leaving viewers with an unsettling feeling that lingers within the shadows of forgotten subway tunnels. Mimic 1997 encountered box office challenges due to various factors. Despite its intriguing concept and Guillermo del Toro's direction, the film suffered from marketing missteps and distribution issues. Its release date positioned it against tough competition, affecting its visibility. Additionally, the film's pacing and character development left some audiences unsatisfied. While the horror genre was thriving, Mimic offered a unique take that might not have resonated with mainstream audiences seeking more traditional scares. Its departure from standard creature features could have alienated viewers expecting a more straightforward monster movie. The film's failure, however, belies its ability to blend thought-provoking themes with suspenseful horror, a later characteristic of del Toro's successful films. The People Under the Stairs, 1991 the People Under the Stairs, 1991, delves into a world of chilling secrets and horrors hidden behind closed doors. When a young boy named Fool learns of his family's impending eviction, he joins a daring burglary scheme, targeting the home of his landlord, the cruel and enigmatic Robeson. Inside their ominous mansion, Fool discovers a labyrinth of dark corridors and trapped souls. 
he encounters other children who've fallen victim to the Robeson sadistic practices, uncovering a nightmarish underworld. As he fights for survival, Full becomes an unlikely hero, exposing the twisted truth and seeking justice for the oppressed. The film intertwines horror and social commentary, exploring themes of greed, exploitation, and resilience. Its gritty atmosphere and unexpected alliances create a gripping narrative that tugs at the heartstrings. The People Under the Stairs invites audiences to question societal norms and root for the underdogs, making it a memorable entry in Wes Craven's filmography. Despite its thought-provoking narrative, the film faced challenges at the box office. Its darker and unconventional themes might not have aligned with mainstream horror expectations of the time. Additionally, the marketing and distribution might not have effectively conveyed the film's unique blend of horror and social commentary. While it didn't soar financially, its impact on horror cinema endures, shining a light on the darkness that can fester within seemingly ordinary settings. In the Mouth of Madness, 1994. In the Mouth of Madness, 1994, takes us on a mind-bending journey into the depths of horror and reality. The film follows insurance investigator John Trent, who is tasked with finding missing horror author Sutter Kane. As Trent delves into Kane's twisted works, he discovers that the boundary between fiction and reality blurs, and his sanity unravels. Nightmarish visions come to life as the town of Hobbs End, featured in Kane's books, becomes a horrifying reality. The film delves into the fragility of human perception and the power of imagination, leaving us questioning the nature of reality itself. John Carpenter's direct evokes an atmosphere of relentless unease, and Sam Neill's portrayal of Trent captures the desperation of a man trapped in a nightmarish spiral. With a bend of psychological horror and metafiction, the film immerses us in a disorienting and terrifying experience that lingers long after the credits roll. Despite its unique premise and Carpenter's reputation, the film struggled at the box office. Its intricate narrative and philosophical themes might have bewildered mainstream audiences expecting more straightforward scares. The marketing campaign might not have effectively conveyed the film's mind-bending nature. Nevertheless, In the Mouth of Madness remains a cult classic for horror enthusiasts, a testament to its daring exploration of the boundaries between imagination and reality. Virus 1999 Virus 1999 thrusts us into the heart of the ocean, where a seemingly routine salvage operation goes awry when a powerful storm strikes. The crew of a tugboat led by Captain Everton discovers an abandoned Russian research ship, the academic Vladislav Volkov. However, their initial excitement turns to horror as they realize the ship's crew has fallen victim to a malevolent extraterrestrial force. This otherworldly parasite assimilates both humans and machines, morphing them into grotesque biomechanical hybrids. As the survivors battle the chilling transformation and fight for their lives, the film delves into the eerie realm where flesh and metal merge, underlying the vulnerability of humanity in the face of an alien menace. Despite boasting a promising concept and impressive special effects, Virus faced severe box office struggles. The film's release coincided with other high-profile sci-fi releases and suffered from poor marketing. Furthermore, the film's muddled tone, shifting from horror to action, might have alienated audiences seeking a more consistent experience. The lack of a strong emotional connection to the characters limited viewers' investment in their plight. Despite these challenges, Virus retains a certain eerie charm and showcases glimpses of captivating body horror, making it a notable entry in the science fiction horror subgenre. Ravenous, 1999. Ravenous, 1999 serves up a unique blend of horror, dark comedy, and historical setting set against the backdrop of the 19th century American frontier. The film follows Captain John Boyd, a soldier plagued by guilt who is posted to remote outpost in the Sierra Nevada mountains. There, he encounters a group of eccentric characters, each harboring their own secrets. When the arrival of a stranger reveals a gruesome tale of cannibalism and survival, Boyd and his companions are thrust into a struggle for their lives as primal desires and insatiable hunger consume them in unexpected ways. The film's eerie atmosphere, coupled with an unconventional score, creates 
creates a haunting experience that explores the darker aspects of human nature. Despite its originality and standout performances, Ravenous struggled at the box office. The film's marketing campaign failed to effectively communicate its genre-blurring nature, leading to misconceptions about its tone. Additionally, its release date coincided with the other major films, diluting its potential audience. The film's unconventional approach to horror, mixing gore with dark humor, might not have resonated with mainstream audiences. Nevertheless, Ravenous has found a cult following for its distinctive storytelling and memorable moments of macabre brilliance. Cube 1998 Cube 1998 immerses us in mind-bending labyrinth of suspense and survival. A group of strangers with different backgrounds wakes up in a series of interconnected cubic rooms, each armed with deadly traps. As they struggle to comprehend their situation and navigate the bewildering maze, tensions rise and alliances form. The film delves into human psychology under pressure, questioning trust, morality, and primal instincts. The stark, claustrophobic setting, accompanied by an eerie score, amplifies the character's desperation and paranoia. With unexpected twists and nerve-wracking decisions, Cube keeps us on the edge, contemplating the fine line between life and death, sanity and madness. Despite its ingenious premise and gripping execution, Cube faced box office struggles. Limited marketing failed to communicate the film's unique concept, leading to misconceptions about its genre and appeal. Its release was overshadowed by larger budget films, and its low budget production might have contributed to perceptions of lower quality. Additionally, its intellectual and psychological themes might not have aligned with mainstream expectations for the horror genre. Despite its initial box office performance, Cube has since gained a cult following for its originality and ability to turn a simple setting into a complex psychological thriller. Progeny 1998 Progeny 1998 delves into the chilling realms of extraterrestrial mysteries and human paranoia. The film revolves around a couple, Dr. Craig Burton and his wife Sherry, whose lives take a bewildering turn when Sherry claims to have been abducted by aliens. As her pregnancy advances at an alarming rate and strange phenomena surround them, Dr. Burton confronts a truth that defies human understanding. The film balances psychological tension and the supernatural, exploring the fragile boundaries between reality and the unknown. With evocative visuals and a haunting score, it delves into the depths of fear and fascination with the extraterrestrial. Despite its intriguing premise, Progeny faced box office challenges, limited marketing and distribution hindered its visibility, failing to garner attention amidst other high-profile releases. The film's focus on psychological horror, rather than conventional scares, might have alienated mainstream audiences, expecting more immediate thrills. Its low-budget production might have also impacted perceptions of its quality. Ultimately, Progeny failed to capture the attention of the box office, despite its thought-provoking exploration of human anxieties about the unknown and the uncanny. The Frighteners, 1996 The Frighteners, 1996 is a roller coaster of supernatural thrills and unexpected humor helmed by Peter Jackson's creative genius. The film follows Frank Bannister, a quirky and lovable ghost hunter who exploits his ability to communicate with spirits for financial gain. However, when a malevolent entity begins causing real deaths and leaving ominous numbers on victims' foreheads, Frank finds himself entangled in a race against time to unravel the mystery. Alongside his spectral friends, he navigates a chilling world where the living and the dead collide. With heart-pounding suspense and witty dialogues, the film balances horror and humor, inviting us to embrace both spine-tingling scares and genuine laughter. Michael J. Fox's charismatic performance as Frank adds emotional depth to the quirky character, and Jackson's direction infuses the film with a distinctive visual style. 
The film's successful fusion of horror and comedy allows it to carve out a unique niche within the genre. In the Frighteners, stands as a testament of Peter Jackson's versatility as a director, delivering a fun and spirited experience that lingers in our memories long after the credits roll. The Frighteners 1996 suffered box office struggles despite its unique blend of horror and humor. The film faced a competitive release schedule, with other major films drawing audiences' attention away. Its marketing might not have effectively conveyed its genre-mixing nature, leaving potential viewers unsure of what to expect. Michael Michael J. Fox's star power wasn't enough to overcome these challenges, and the film's supernatural premise might not have fully resonated with audiences seeking more straightforward scares. Despite its cult following today, the film's initial commercial disappointment remains a testament to the unpredictability of box office success. Stir of Echoes, 1999 Stir of Echoes 1999 weaves a haunting tale that grips both heart and mind. Tim Witzke, played by Kevin Bacon, leads an ordinary life until a hypnotic experiment awakens an unsettling gift within him. The ability to see and sense the supernatural. As he becomes consumed by eerie visions, he's driven to uncover a local mystery involving a missing girl. The film delves into Tom's descent into obsession and his relentless pursuit of the truth, even as it strains his relationships. The atmospheric tension, coupled with Bacon's riveting performance, captures the desperation of a man entwined in the spectral unknown. It's a chilling exploration of the thin line between reality and the unexplainable, leaving us questioning what lies beyond our perceptions. With its intense portrayal of psychological unraveling and supernatural intrigue, Stir of Echoes offers a visceral experience. It delves into the complexities of the human mind when confronted with the inexplicable, evoking both fear and empathy. As Tom grapples with his newfound abilities, the film immerses us in his emotional journey, reminding us that some mysteries can never truly be put to rest. Stir of Echoes 1999 faced box office challenges despite its gripping narrative and Kevin Bacon's compelling performance. Its release coincided with other major films, diluting its potential audience. The film's marketing might not have effectively conveyed its mix of supernatural and psychological elements, leaving audiences uncertain about its genre. Additionally, the film's more understated approach to horror might not have aligned with mainstream expectations for the time, which favored more explicit scares. The lack of a big-budget spectacle and recognizable star power could have also contributed to its commercial struggles. Despite its failure at the box office, Stir of Echoes has garnered a cult following for its psychological depth and unsettling atmosphere, standing as a hidden gem in the horror genre. New Nightmare, 1994 New Nightmare 1994 delivers a chilling meta-horror experience that blurs the lines between reality and fiction. The film reunites us with the iconic character Freddy Krueger, but this time in a realm where his malevolent presence seeps into the real world. Heather Langenkamp, who played the original Nancy Thompson, finds herself haunted by Freddy in her waking life. As a series of terrifying events unfold, she realizes that the boundary between the cinematic nightmare and her reality is dissolving. The film navigates a complex narrative, blending horror, psychological tension, and self-awareness as it questions the power of storytelling and the lingering impact of horror on the human psyche. Wes Craven's direction imbues the film with a sense of eerie unease, and Heather Langenkamp's portrayal adds emotional depth to the character. By breaking the fourth wall and exploring the effects of horror on those who created, New Nightmare delves into the realm of meta-horror, inviting audiences to reflect on the intimate connection between fiction and fear. With its inventive narrative and introspective themes, the film stands as a thought-provoking and resonant entry in the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. 
The film faced challenges at the box office despite its innovative approach to the horror genre. The film's unique metafictional concept might have confused mainstream audiences, as it blurs the lines between the fictional and real worlds. The film's marketing might not have effectively communicated its departure from the traditional slasher formula. Additionally, the franchise fatigue and the release of other high-profile films could have diverted attention away from it. The lack of the usual Freddy Krueger character and the film's more cerebral nature might not have aligned with the audience's expectations. However, over time, the film has garnered appreciation for its self-reflective take on horror and remains a cult favorite among fans of the genre. Castle Freak, 1995 Castle Creek 1995 plunges us into a grim tale of horror and human anguish. After inheriting an old castle, a troubled couple, John and Susan find themselves grappling with the aftermath of a tragic accident. As they settle into the castle, they unwittingly release a tormented and disfigured creature, a prisoner of the castle's depths. The film delves into themes of guilt, grief, and the darkness within us all. As the creature terrorizes them, John and Susan must confront not only the external threat, but also the demons that haunt their own souls. With its atmospheric setting and claustrophobic tension, Castle Freak elicits a sense of dread and compassion for its tormented characters. Jeffrey Combs' portrayal of John captures the weight of guilt and the lengths a father would go to mend his shattered family. The film delves into the boundaries between monstrosity and humanity, challenging us to question who the real monsters are. While it might not have achieved commercial success, Castle Freak lingers in the minds of horror enthusiasts for its emotional depth and exploration of the darkest corners of the human psyche. Castle Rock 1995 encountered box office challenges due to various reasons. The film was released as part of the H.P. Lovecraft's Necromonican Anthology, and its connection to the Lovecraftian mythos must not have been clearly communicated in its marketing. Additionally, the film's title might have led audiences to expect a more traditional monster movie, when in reality, it delved into darker psychological horror. Its lack of recognizable star power and a limited budget might have impacted its appeal to mainstream audiences. Furthermore, the release timing and competition from other horror films might have diverted attention away from it. Despite its financial struggles, Castle Freak has garnered a cult following for its emotional intensity and its ability to explore the complexities of human suffering within a horror framework. Event Horizon 1997 Event Horizon 1997 takes us on an unsettling journey through the depths of space and human terror. The film revolves around a rescue mission led by Captain Miller, played by Lawrence Fishbourne, aboard the spaceship Lewis and Clark. Their mission is to investigate the return of the long-lost vessel Event Horizon, which disappeared years earlier while testing an experimental faster-than-light drive. As the crew explores the eerie, gravity-defying ship, they confront their deepest fears and darkest memories as the Event Horizon's malevolent influence drives them to the brink of insanity. The film combines elements of sci-fi and horror, weaving an atmosphere of cosmic dread that leaves us questioning the limits of human consciousness and the horrors that might lurk beyond our understanding. Director Paul W.S. Anderson's masterful visuals and the hauntingly atmospheric score create an immersive experience. Sam Neill's portrayal of Dr. William Ware adds layers of psychological complexity as he grapples with the consequences of his creation. The film taps into our primal fears of the unknown, intertwining science fiction with a descent into psychological terror. Despite its initial underperformance, Event Horizon has found a dedicated following for its haunting portrayal of cosmic horror and its exploration of the dark recesses of the human mind in the far reaches of space. Event Horizon 1997 faced significant challenges at the box office due to a combination of factors. Its release coincided with other big-budget films, diverting attention from its unique blend of science fiction and horror. The film's marketing campaign might not have effectively communicated its unsettling cosmic horror tone, leading to misconceptions about its genre. The gruesome and disturbing imagery, as well as its visceral scares, might not have aligned with mainstream audience expectations for a more traditional sci-fi film. 
Additionally, the film's grim and intense themes could have turned off some viewers, seeking more light-hearted fare. Despite its initial box office struggles, Event Horizon has gained a cult following for its visceral horror and thought-provoking exploration of the human psyche when faced with the unimaginable. The Ugly 1997 The Ugly 1997 delves into the chilling depths of the human mind, where the distinction between reality and imagination becomes a twisted enigma. The film follows Detective Muldoon, who unravels the enigmatic psyche of Simon Cartwright, a man accused of heinous murders. As Muldoon peels back the layers of Simon's past, a haunting tapestry of trauma, mental anguish, and buried memories emerges. The film journeys through a disorienting landscape, where the boundaries of reality and the shadowy corridors of the mind blur into a nightmarish realm. The ugly transcends conventional horror, delving into the unsettling nature of evil that resides within the human psyche. With compelling performances and an evocative atmosphere, it beckons viewers to question the very essence of malevolence and the fragile line separating victim from predator. While the film might not have enjoyed widespread success upon release, its courage to plunge into the psychological abyss has carved a niche for it among aficionados of cerebral horror. It's a haunting exploration of the darkest corners of the mind, inviting us to confront the uncomfortable truths that lie within us all. The ugly 1997 faced box office challenges due to its unconventional approach to horror. Its psychological complexity and cerebral narrative might not have have aligned with mainstream horror expectations. The film's limited marketing and distribution hindered its visibility and its lack of recognizable star power might have impacted its appeal. While it struggled initially, the film's unique and thought-provoking exploration of the human psyche has garnered it a cult following over time. Body Parts 1991 Body Parts 1991 plunges us into a chilling tale of science and horror entwined. Dr. Bill Cruikshank, a brilliant surgeon, faces a harrowing accident that costs him his arm. Given a new lease on life, he receives a groundbreaking arm transplant, unaware of the terror that will unfold. As his life seemingly returns to normal, he discovers that the arm he received once belonged to a sadistic serial killer. Haunting changes begin to take place within him as he experiences terrifying visions and violent impulses. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, he delves into the origins of his transplanted limb, uncovering a sinister experiment that has left others haunted by their transplanted parts. The film skillfully melds the suspense of a medical thriller with the visceral horror of a psychological nightmare. Jeff Fahey's portrayal of Dr. Cruikshank captures the desperation of a man entangled in a horrifying fate, and the eerie atmosphere enhances the film's ability to evoke dread. In Body Parts, delves into the ethical dilemmas of medical advancements and the horrifying consequences of tampering with human nature. Despite its initial commercial challenges, the film endures for its ability to tap into primal fears and question the boundaries between science and the supernatural. Body Parts 1991 encountered box office struggles due to a mix of factors. The film's marketing might not have effectively conveyed its unique premise of a man receiving transplanted limbs from a serial killer. Its blend of horror and thriller elements might have been a tough sell to audiences seeking more straightforward scares. Additionally, the film's release faced competition from other high-profile movies, impacting its visibility. The absence of recognizable star power and a lack of sustained marketing efforts likely contributed to its commercial disappointment. Despite these challenges, the film the film's exploration of body horror and ethical dilemmas has led to a small cult following. Trauma 1993 Trauma 1993 is a chilling tale of suspense. A former drug addict named Aura returns to her mother's apartment, only to be plunged into a nightmare. As she navigates the eerie building, she encounters a series of gruesome murders that hint at a disturbing history of violence. A photojournalist named David becomes her ally in uncovering the truth behind the deaths. The film unveils shocking secrets tied to a sinister past, 
weaving an atmosphere of suspense and unease. With its haunting visuals and a sense of impending danger, trauma dives into the psychological labyrinth of trauma and survival. Despite its intriguing plot and director Dario Argento's reputation in the horror genre, trauma faced box office challenges. The film's convoluted narrative and disjointed pacing might have perplexed mainstream audiences seeking more linear storytelling. Its dark themes and gruesome imagery could have been a tough sell for audiences seeking lighter horror fare. Additionally, its release coincided with other high-profile films, impacting its visibility. The lack of familiarity and its international cast might also have played a role. Although trauma didn't shine commercially, its exploration of psychological horror and visceral suspense still resonates with fans of the genre. Marvelous Verdict each film covers a unique angle which somehow failed to grasp its audience. The underrated films didn't score big. Their unique and unconventional way of storytelling scored our hearts for sure. Unfortunately for the directors, it might have been a humongous loss who only wished for their audience to enjoy their art of storytelling. This is all from our team. I hope you do give it a watch. If y'all do, let us know how you've liked the films. The wicked will be punished!